A very good afternoon to all of you. I am Dr. Kumar Parag, and today I will be discussing class uh, nine book B hive. In that one, the chapter ten, I am going to discuss with you all. So I hope that you are going to enjoy this chapter. This chapter name is Kathmandu, and it is written by Vikram Seth. Now, before telling about the chapter or about the content of the chapter, that what is the chapter or the story is all about, let me uh, first give you the brief background of it. Now, first, he was born in twentieth uh, June, nineteen fifty-two. He is a very famous English writer, and he has written travelog, uh, travelogs. Uh, uh, he is a famous travelog writer, novelist, poet, and he has written memoirs, etc. Now, the extract from which the Kathmandu is taken, it is taken from Heaven Lake Travel Through Sankiang and Tibet, written in. in uh, 1983 so this was the background which is not there in the book but just for your information i am giving this uh, background to you that these are this is the brief background that from where the extract uh, was taken now before uh, again a brief background is there that when he was a student exchange student in nanjing university then he wrote this book it was written in 1983 and he traveled from nanjing to delhi and in between he took a stop over to kathmandu and for this book he was also given a thomas cook travel book award uh, for that uh, uh, book is there from where this extract is taken now first of all it is a travel log writing what is a travel log travel log is there for example the person or the writer visits that particular place and he tries to discuss the uh, the place in detail but he is not giving his own ideas it is based on his own observation he sees galaxy of people and on that basis he makes a uh, he makes a, his observation and the observation is in form of a book transcultural identity this is the most important part when we do uh, discuss travel log the reason because the transcultural identity here means that the identity of the people who are living because it is not that only the ethnic people are living in that particular city there are many other people from different ethnic backgrounds are living in that particular city so it is the transcultural identity which is discussed in this chapter social space that how the people perform within the limit of the social space which they have the limit they have and in that one the society in which they are living for example how they behave what is their uh, behavior with others how they are living whether they are liking disliking so all those things are discussed spiritual journey now in reference to kathmandu when we are talking about kathmandu in particular here he is talking it is more of a spiritual journey because he is going to discuss two sacred places which he visited did while he was in kathmandu now this was an unconventional journey back to his home in delhi as i have already told you he wanted to come back to his home but instead of taking directly instead of taking flight directly from china he took the flight to nepal and from nepal he came to delhi so he started from china then he visited kathmandu the capital of nepal now when he was there for example in kathmandu he visited pashupati nath temple the most sacred place for buddha for hindu and buddha stupa for buddhist now in detail it is a like a comparison also of the two religion when we are talking about the buddha uh, pashupati nath temple and the buddha stupa so he visited this uh, the place because it was the most sacred place, uh, place for hindus and many of the hindus do travel to uh, to this place just to uh, to get blessed from uh, lord shiva and then at the same time the people who are practicing buddhism they also uh, visit the buddha nath stupa to get the blessing of lord buddha now when we are talking about this one you are going to find in the slide that i have written a tourist attraction but also a religious religious journey to find his own inner self now here the author uh, the writer vikram say tries to explore himself that who i am 
एज अ ह्यूमन बींग विद वॉट इज माई परफॉर्मेंस इन द सोसाइटी और इन द प्लेस वेयर एवर ही इज रिटर्न दो इट वॉज अ टूरिस्ट टूरिस्ट अट्रैक्शन बट इट इज देयर डैट ही वॉन्टेड टू नो अबाउट हिमसेल्फ एज अ ह्यूमन बींग फ्रॉम वेयर ही बिलोंग बिकॉज वेन वी डू टॉक अबाउट विक्रम सेठ इन पर्टिकुलर इट इज देयर डैट ही वॉज एन एथेस्ट ही वॉज एन अनबिलीवर बट एट द सेम टाइम he was born in a hindu family so he wanted to he had a curiosity to see that how he is uh, how uh, how uh, when he was born and brought up for example he was a hindu so he wanted to see the religion and the people how they explore themselves so those things are discussed in this chapter now this is the image of pashupati nath temple uh, which i have taken from uh, google and this is a uh, this is the temple uh, which i have uh, the picture is there similarly this is the uh, this is the budhna stupa the uh, the the picture of budhna stupa is there and you can easily find on the uh, website now at the pashupati nath temple he has when you are going to start the chapter you are going to find that he has given in particular that at pashupati nath outside which a sign proclaims entrance for the hindus only now this particular line is very important because vikram seth maybe was a kind of a critique that why it is that the hindus are only given access to uh, to this temple why not the people from other religion maybe because the people are coming for uh, for tourism so maybe when the people from other religion if they are going to enter the temple it is going to be there that the crowd may be unmanageable or the people who are there for worship only they may get disturbed so that may be a thing that is there that that is the reason is there that the pashupati nath temple was uh, at the entrance of the pashupati nath temple uh, this uh, this line was written entrance uh, for the hindus only at the same time just for your information this book was written in 1983 at that time nepal was a hindu state it was but later i think in 2015 i guess they have declared themselves as a secular state by an act of parliament you, this particular portion you are not going to be finding in the book the reason because it was written in 1983 but later in 2015 but the book is still being prescribed in your syllabus just for your information it is there that we are we are talking about that uh, we, i am just giving you the information that now it is a secular state like india earlier they have categorically stated that nepal is a hindu state now when he is talking about uh, religion naturally he is also talking about the nepalese economy why he is talking about the economy because on these religious journeys the whole of the nepalese economy depends on whether the buddhi buddhist or the hindus or vice versa when they are traveling to kathmandu so you are going to find a lot of hotels there lot of tourism taxis and th those thing because the whole of the economy is is dependent on the religious journeys taken by hindus and buddhist at the same time he is he found a huge crowd at the entrance temple and he appreciated it and he was surprised by the level of devotion because he was an atheist atheist means non believer now he found huge crowd at the entrance of the temple because it was new it was not new to him but he appreciated it because the level of people the determination the devotion which the hindus have to lord shiva so that that he discussed in it because here if we see vikram said because he was a stanford scholar so for that re reason he was a he was trying to show this uh, perspective to his western readers so that's why he has written that uh, there was a huge crowd at the entrance of the temple and he was surprised by the level of devotion because lot of foreigners do get surprised that how these people or they go miles and miles just to get themselves blessed so those things he has described in this particular chapter now this is an extract from the chapter uh to make it easy you are going to find it in the book itself i get a cheap room in the center of the town and sleep for hours the next morning with mr shah's son and nephew i visit the two temples in kathmandu that are most sacred to hindus and buddhist 
Now, why he has started with these lines? I get a cheap room. The word he has used, the cheap room, the reason because at that time he was a student, he cannot afford a high-end hotel. So, for that reason, he has used the word cheap room and he has deliberately taken the room in the center, in the city center, so that from there he can see the whole of Kathmandu or he can get the feel of whole of Kathmandu. And at the same time, he called, uh, it was Mr. Shah's son and nephew, and because these people were helping him to see the sacred places in Kathmandu as well as the whole city. So he wanted to get the history uh, of the particular city. So that's why uh, he went, uh, he, took, uh, he took help from Mr. Shah's son and nephew. Now, there are so many worshippers that some people trying to get the priest's attention are elbowed aside by others pushing their way to the front. When we do talk, when you are going to see these lines, it is that he tries to show the Indian subcontinent or the South Asian countries the level of devotion. And here he, in a way, is criticizing the superstition which is there in Hinduism. Superstition because we have in our mind, for example, that if we are going to be at the front and in front uh, if we are there, then... Uh, the God is going, there will be a direct connection with the God and the God is going to bless us. I, if we are at the back, the God is not going to bless us. So that, those things he is trying to uh, show or depict while writing this particular chapter. So that is the reason is there that he is using these words are uh, there. So uh, he, in a way, he's showing the superstition of the Hindus and according to him, we should not indulge in superstition because it is a very common habit in in temples which are in India also that people push their way in front so that they can directly connect with God that is not the case if you are at the back also the God is equally going to bless you another thing I have uh, you when you are going to read this particular chapter uh, you are going to find the line a princess of the Nepalese royal house appears everyone bows and makes way again this book was written in 1983 it was not written in uh, 2018 or 2020 or 2017. At that time, royalty was there in Nepal, like in Thailand, like in England, like in uh, Spain. But now royalty is totally absent. It is like a typical uh, state like uh, India, where you have a president, you are a prime minister. It is a secular state. Now ro royalty is totally absent. Otherwise, before in 1983 or Till 2005 or 6, I guess, there everything was decided by the king. Even the prime minister, the, uh, who will be the prime minister, it was the uh, king who used to uh, make, uh, make uh, it, was the, uh, it was the prince, uh, it was the king who used to, uh, who used to uh, invite him to become prime minister and he had the ri right to dismantle the government. But after two, uh, 2007 or 8, I guess, it was that the uh, royalty was was abolished uh, from uh, Nepal. Again, some lines from the book is there that by the main gate, a party of saffron clad westerners struggle for permission to enter. The policeman is not convinced that they are the Hindus. Now, only Hindus are allowed in the, uh, to enter the temple. Now, when these lines are there, for example, in the book, this means that whosoever is there that the policeman was confused that really they were uh, these are Hindus or not so that's why they, uh, the westerners were not allowed in a way Vikram Seth criticizes this kind of an act the reason because he says that every person from uh, uh, every person from every religion should be allowed to enter the temple so that they can get the feel of the religion and they can appreciate the religion now, he again talks about the superstition. For example, a small shrine half, uh, half protrudes uh, from the stone platform on the river bank. When it emerges fully, the, go the goddesses inside will escape and the evil period of the Kalyug uh, will end on earth. So, here it is a myth. This is a myth. 
for example he is talking about uh, the, uh, this place the reason because a small shrine was there that the people believe in it but there is no scientific evidence that if the goddess is going to escape really the kalyug is going to end you are going to get it into in the mythological books but scientifically this is not proven so deliberately he has written these lines in the chapter or in the book so that the people can interpret with their scientific mind now this was the description of the hindu uh, hindu temple pashupati nath now he then visits the buddhanath stupa the buddhist shrine of kathmandu and it was there in contrast a kind of stillness was there why are he has used the word stillness the reason because less crowd was there now we have to understand that hinduism is practiced in la by large number of people and buddhism is not practiced in that manner as far as nepal is concerned so for that reason you are not going to be finding much uh, many people there at the same time he is discussing that how that particular shrine on that particular shrine the economy of nepal is dependent so that's why he has uh, written that when he's describing the temple it is not that he's describing only the the structure of the temple he is describing the what is going around the temple for example small shops stand on the outer edge many are owned by tibetan immigrants now why he has used the word tibetan immigrants because he wanted to show that kathmandu is a multicultural society it is not it okay the hindus uh, the nepali hindus are dominating nepal but there are other people from different culture are living in nepal so he tries to show the multicultural approach of that particular society and he is uh, and he is trying to show that mostly the tibetan immigrants are in uh business for example in nepal they are uh, selling bags artificial jewelries those things are there but there, there is a uh, there and there are no crowds and he is again stressing that there is no crowd the reason because he was living in uh, in stanford and he wanted the place which which should be quiet and he can explore himself so he found he found that buddhana stupa is more suitable for him than uh pashupati nath temple it is up to the author that it is his interpretation is there we cannot say anything about it so he found that the meditativeness which he found in buddha stupa is more in comparison to that uh, the temple he has visited now here he is also talking about the busy streets around here the same thing is there that he was born and brought up uh, his hometown is delhi for example and he knew it very well and the same thing he is describing that like any other city car, uh, of india kathmandu is also the same you have uh, uh, busy streets around around the temple now this is the description of the city now this is the most important part that vikram seth has not restricted himself only in the description about his the religious journey or the temples and shrine yes the city is totally dependent on religion for example that's why the tourism is generated and that's why the people are uh, earning their living uh, they are, they are able to earn their living but at the same time he is also describing kathmandu as a city also okay it is there that he is using the word religious you are uh, you are going to find that small shrines are there deities are there narrow narrow and busy streets are there uh, people are somebody is uh, selling fruit somebody is selling flute somebody is selling for a postcard shops are there Nep uh, nepali antiques are being sold so those things are there why he is describing kathmandu like that the reason because he again is trying to compare nepal with india that in mostly in all the south asian cities the situation is the same if you are going to come to nepal it is not much different when we are talking about india as a country or any other country like bangladesh or something like that so he is talking about in general about the south asian cities which are there in this uh, subcontinent indian subcontinent now 
फिल्म सॉन्ग्स ब्लेयर आउट फ्रॉम द रेडियोज कार हॉर्न कार हॉर्न साउंड बाइसाइकल बेल रिंग स्ट्रे क्राउज एक्सेट्रा सो हियर ही इज ऑल्सो टॉकिंग अबाउट द फिल्म सॉन्ग्स ना वेन ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द फिल्म सॉन्ग्स ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द बॉलीवुड बेसिकली बिकॉज दे आर ऑल्सो बॉलीवुड इज लाइक एंड बॉलीवुड मूवीज और म्यूजिक इज इज लिसनड इन बाय द नेपाली नेपाली पॉपुलेशन सो ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट डैट एंड बट ही हैज नॉट डिस्क्राइब्ड in particular that which are the film songs are there nepali film industry is there but it is uh, very small so i believe that when he is talking about film songs he is talking about the songs of uh, bollywood similarly he is talking about stray cows because that you can get in delhi also there you are there you have motorcycles also the vendors are shouting to, uh, to sell their things so those things he had uh, he is describing in particular now here when he is as i have already told you that while describing nepal's capital he tries to correlate with the indian cities nostalgia is there uh, people uh, or uh, is there that nostalgia not only nostalgia is there but at the same time he is trying to show that all the cities or like india like bombay mumbai you have or chennai nepal's capital is also the same and it in a way he is trying to show or depict that if you are in nepal it is not that it is an alien land or you are you are coming to a very new land or, which is totally different it is the same way it is there whether the customs whether the traditions everything we are talking about you are going to be finding the uh, those things in nepal also now street shopping he is describing the reason because he has in, himself indulged in street uh, uh, shopping for example so like in india when a tourist is out uh, when he is in bombay pune or nagpur or ahmedabad or any other place people indulge in street so shopping so the same thing is there when he, we, when we are talking about kathmandu so the people are uh, uh, so that is the reason is there that he is uh, he is making a core correlation between the two now this is the most important part homesickness why because th these are the lines taken uh, from the chapter and if you are going to read it i consider what route i should take back home if i were propelled by enthusiasm for travel per se i would go by bus and train to patna then sail up the ganges past banaras to allahabad then up uh, up the yamuna past agra to delhi so on and so forth then and the end you are going to find that when you going going to read the chapter that i enter a nepal nepal airlines office and buy a ticket for tomorrow's flight now why i have used the term homesickness the reason because at the end of the day the person who wherever he is he wants to get to his home because that is a place where he belongs he had the idea that he will not be tired and and he is going to go to delhi via varanasi to alabad from via agra to delhi he is he was thinking that one but he was unable to do so because he was very exhausted so for that reason he decided that directly taking the flight from kathmandu to delhi uh, he is thought now when he is describing the banaras ilhabad or agra or this one he wanted to visit the place especially banaras and ilhabad for religious purpose that how religion is practiced in those parts of the uh in in those parts uh, uh, which are the part of india is there agra wanted he wanted to go because taj mahal is there so it was a religious come tourist journey here we can say and if you are going to say, uh, look at he has used the word homesick uh, homesick and at the same time he has used today is the last day of august now today is the last day of august means that now this is the last day i want to take the flight i want to meet my family i want to meet my relative i cannot Uh, live without them so that's why he is using such type of words so that he can quickly can go and visit the uh, uh, can go home and visit his parents or family so less this is the most important part when you are going to read uh, this particular book in uh, this particular sorry not the book the chapter that uh, i look at the flute seller standing in a corner of the square of the square near the hotel in his hand is a pole with an attachment at the top from with 50 or 60 basuri so he is describing flute for example 
continuing he is comparing the flute that the sound of music here when he is talking about the flute he is not describing the instrument he is not describing the instrument he is describing that particular instru instrument for example what the sound is coming out from the flute because that is meditative and that is giving solace solace means that peace now he has seen the traffic noise of this one and he was fed up with that one so for that reason he is talking about for example the solace which is there for example the meditativeness peace which is which he gets when he is listening to the music at the same time when you are going to uh, for example when you are uh, going to read this particular chapter he is comparing flute that the instrument is the same somewhere else it is uh, used in a different manner somewhere uh, else it is used in a different manner so in that way uh, the uh, the basic purpose of a flute of that particular instrument is to produce music so that from that music which soothes the soul so for that reason he has specially devoted one or two paragraphs on flute only so that the people uh, the reader for example can understand the importance of music because earlier also he talked about the film music if you are going to read the chapter uh, if you are going to read the chapter you have the film music because some people who are not acquainted with classical music or they are uh, in the popular culture for example they are, they are going to depend on the uh, film music to get themselves elated so what uh vikram said very well knew that for that the importance of flute and the importance of music that's why he is de describing it in detail universal culture now this is the most important part is there because flute is uh played in many ways it is not that in india it is called basuri the same the, the flute in uh, western society it is called flute so it is there in many ways but he is propagating universal culture the reason because at the end of the day the music which is coming out from that particular uh, piece of instrument for example is soothing the soul and every human being every uh, human uh, person who is there he is ultimately when he is calm and quiet he will have the positive energy and through positive energy he can contribute to the uh, to life for example or the contribution he can make positive contribution to the country so that's why he is talking about the universal culture now here again he is describing that uh, for example there is no culture that does not have its flute now he is giving the 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 comparison in japanese what is called in south american country uh, uh, places the flute how the flute is there or how high pitch flute in china is there so he is describing that one to that everywhere the instrument is there so every person is really one first they are human being then they are something else so in a way he is propagating humanity now there you are going to find when you are going to see that uh, there is a kind of a comparison also between hinduism and buddhism for example buddhist shrines has a sense of stillness why he is talking the, the sense of stillness the reason less crowd is there since there is less crowd is there so for that reason he is talking about that uh, that he likes more of a buddhism than hinduism because least people are practicing and you are getting uh, more space there so might be there that he is talking at the same time he is talking about the tibetan immigrants when he is talking about buddhism is there so why he is talking about the tibetan Im immigrants that it is not that the buddhism is practiced in india also it is practiced by other people also and uh, a comparison is there the level of quietness is there because in pashupati nath temple he may not be able to meditate uh, fully so that's why he may be liking buddhism the other perspective is there that here we can see that he is more of a westerner than an indian because when he is comparing uh, when he is making a comparison he has a western eye 
uh, in comparison rather than have the Indianness in it. I am not criticizing him. It is his perspective is there, but it is there that now he uh, uh, maybe that he has uh, written this particular book, uh, keeping his Western uh, Western uh, readers in mind. So that's why he is making a comparison between Hinduism and Buddhism. Thank you very much.